Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Pauline Fu. In this video, I will present diagnostic of least squares regression. So at the end of this lecture, you will be able to uh, compute and interpret the coefficient of determination, okay, R squared, coefficient of determination. And you are going to be able to perform residue analysis on a regression model. Finally, you will be able to identify inferential point or inferential observations. So let's take a look at the definition of coefficient of determination, R squared. Coefficient of determination, R squared, measures the proportion of total variation in the response variable, that is the Y response variable that is explained by the least square regression line, means that is explained by explanatory variable x. In other words, coefficient of determination measures how much changes in y can be explained by x, okay? How much changes? For example, if R square equal to 0 0.85, that means 85% changes in Y are due to X, okay? Uh, the coefficient of determination, it is a number between zero and one. Okay. When R square or coefficient of determination equal to zero, the line has no explanatory value. Okay, X has nothing to do with Y. X does not contribute anything to Y. If R square equal to one, that means the percentage changes in Y are due to 100% changes in X. Under what circumstances can that be happened? When you have X and Y perfectly on the straight line, so for example, if you have observational data, X and Y lining up perfectly in the straight line. In that case, R square equal to one. But normally, when you put the observation data in the scatter plot, normally you do not have the perfect line. Usually data is spread a little bit, okay? Um, the more spread, the smaller the R square. The more concentrate the data close to a straight line, the bigger the R square. Uh, let's take an example to compute and interpret the coefficient of determination R square. Uh, if you are given the data, given an X value, X represents the depth at which drilling begins. And you also given the Y value, time to drill five feet on the surface. How do you calculate R square? Uh, remember R square, it is just correlation coefficient square. Okay. So first step, you calculate correlation coefficient R. Second step, you square this R and you get coefficient of determination. So let's go back to Excel to do this calculation. Okay. Um, so this is the data here, I highlighted here. Okay. Uh, in order to calculate R square, you calculate R so I'm going to maybe put the result, put the result here. Okay, so equal, here's the font size. Okay. 
The formula for calculate linear correlation coefficient is equal C O R R E L opening bracket select x value comma then select y value closing bracket okay. so r equal to 0 0.773 once you get r r square it is just this number you square it okay and you get 0 0.5972 0.5973. So I will. So R in Excel, you type in C O R R E L, and then put this value, select this value as your X, comma, and then select this value as your Y and closing bracket. So you get 0 0.773 in Excel. This is in Excel. And then you square this number. So R square, you just square this number, you get coefficient of determination okay. and the result is 0 0.5973. Okay. So that is the uh, coefficient of determination and how do you interpret this number interpretation? So this number is the same as 59%, 59.73%. So the interpretation is 59.7% changes in time are due to the depths. 59.7% changes in time are due to depths. Okay. And this is the uh, scatter plot, scatter plot. Right. Uh, some basic statistics, sample statistics about the data. Um, there are two variables. One is x depth, the other is y. Okay. And uh, you can calculate the mean for x the mean for y. You can also calculate the standard deviation for x, standard deviation for y. Okay. And the correlation between depth and time, um, it is this one. There is actually a formula. Remember last lecture, we talked about how do you calculate linear correlation coefficient? So the formula is uh, least square interprets. It is the first lecture for regression analysis, scantogram, and uh, so just try to locate the formula. See, this is the formula. This is the formula for linear correlation coefficient. Okay, linear correlation coefficient R, you need to calculate X bar, Y bar, SX, SY. Okay, and then divide, uh, add them all divided by N minus one. So that's why we need a test um, basic sample statistics. So we need this one here. So, this mean, this is x bar equal to 126, and 6.99 is y bar, 52.2 is sx, standard deviation for x, and 0 0.78, standard deviation for y, 
to calculate this r, you plug in the formula r equal to x minus x bar divided by sx. This number multiply y divide minus y bar divided by s y and you have to add them all divided by sample size minus one okay and um, i give you the detailed calculation how to use excel or you can use calculator uh, in the lecture named uh, scatter plot and uh, correlation okay. and you can get this r equal to 0 0.773 Um, and also we can get the regression equation, regression equation. Uh, remember the format for regression equation is y hat equal to b1 x plus b0. And how do you calculate uh, b1 slope? b1 equal to B1 equal to linear correlation coefficient R times SY standard deviation for Y divided by SX. That is B, B1 and the intercept B0. B0 equal to Y bar minus B1 X bar. Uh, because those formula involve x bar, y bar, s, x, y, s, y, so you need the, this data here. This data gives you x bar, y bar, s, x, s, y. Okay. Um, so this is a sample statistics. So next question. Suppose we were asked to predict the time to drill an additional five feet, but we didn't know the current depth of the drill. What would be our best guess? So you don't know the current depth of the drill. You don't know X, but how do you guess Y? If you don't know X, how do you guess Y? you use the average. So the sample average is the best estimator for the population average. Okay. So in this case, the average is 6.99. So the answer is use average y bar equal to 6.99. Nine nine. So the answer is if we didn't know the current depth of the drill, the time to drill additional five feet is 6.99 minutes. But now suppose we ask to predict the time to drill an additional five feet if the current depth of the drill is 160 feet. So if we know the current depth 160 feet, we can use regression to make prediction. Remember in this slide, we have a regression equation, okay? Time equal to means y hat equal to 5.53, okay. this is intercept plus slope 0 0.0116 depth, depth is x. You just plug in x with 160 and you get the estimate predict value. Okay, so 
the question asks you, when x equal to 160, what is y? The answer is, when x equal to 160, y equal to 7.39. Okay. So as you can see, our gas increased from 6.99, that is the average, to 6.39, that is the result of regression equation. Okay. Um, because the drill depth is positively related with the drill time. So, so far we talked about uh, coefficient of determination. Next, we are going to do detailed analysis for coefficient of determination. To do that, uh, we are going to introduce uh, some terminologies based on scatter plot. Remember the data, the drilling data? This data here. This is the drilling data, okay? This data, x is the depth, y is the time. Uh, so, x is the depth, y is the time. You can draw a scatter plot. Okay, those dots represent standard plot. And how do you draw it? Just recall we did in the previous lecture. So you select the data, go to insert, and then scatter plot. And you get this scatter plot here. Okay. And once you have this scatter plot, we are going to do some analysis. This is the scatter plot. Okay. So first, we want to say what is y bar. We also want to draw y bar means the average drilling time. The average drilling time. We already did the basic statistic here. It is 6.99 here. Okay, 6.99. is the average drilling time. So we draw that line. So this line represents 6.99, this straight line, okay. Uh, and uh, we also have the regression line. We also have the regression line, this line here. This is the regression line, okay. And the regression line is a straight line. So this one here is the regression line. This straight line is the regression line. Okay, regression line. And then we randomly select a point. For example, we select this point. We select this point. And this is observed y, okay? And based on this observed y, we can make a prediction using the regression line, okay? Remember the y hat is the prediction line, regression line. We can do y hat. So where is y hat? Actually, this line is y hat. So I'm going to highlight using the same color. Where is y hat? All the points on this regression line is y hat. Okay. And based on this y hat, you can calculate a y. So I'm going to put the dot here. Okay, so this red dot is the observed y and you can calculate y hat, it is here, y hat. See, there is a difference here. That difference is y minus y hat. Okay, I'll be back, my doggy knocked the door.
All right. So I'm back. So that represents observed y minus predicted y. So this y is observed y, y hat predicted y, observed minus predicted. And this is actually the difference unexplained by drill depths by x, unexplained by x. Okay, now let's take a look at um, this point here. This point represents average y, it is 6.99. And uh, did you notice there is also a difference here between regression y hat and y bar? So y hat, y bar, there is also the difference. And this difference explained by x. x is a drill depth. And also we observed from here, this point, from here to here, that is the total deviation. Okay, total deviation. From here, remember this point represents y, this point represents y bar. So y minus y bar represents the total deviation. Okay. And what is the relationship among those three quantity? One is observed y minus predicted y. Okay, the other is predicted y minus average y, and still the other is observed y minus average y. What are the relationship among those three uh, quantity? So this diagram shows these three, this is the relationship. So total deviation equal to unexplained deviation plus explained deviation. Again, this diagram shows uh, this one here. So this is observed y, okay. observed y, and at this point you see y hat, regression y, y hat, and this one is also y, y bar, so you see, we have three different y, three different y all in one diagram. This y, observed y, the, the y in the table, in data table. So where is my observed y? All this data here, you see the y, 5.88, 5.99, 6.74, they all belong to observed y. Each number is observed y, okay? So you have a concrete understanding what is the observed y. And this is y hat, okay? And the way in my y hat, y hat is the result of regression line. Remember, if you plug in x, you get y hat. How do you get y hat? See, this is an example. How do you get y hat? Based on regression line, okay? And then we have y bar, three different y, okay? Okay, go back to this deviation. Total deviation equal to unexplained deviation plus explained deviation. You do a little bit algebra, you take the square um, of both side and then you add them all, you get this one here. Um, normally, we don't, if mathematically, if you have A equal to B plus C, you don't have A square, you don't necessarily have A square equal to B square plus C square. But in this case, if you do a little algebra, you would have this hold true. Okay. And this we call total deviation equal to unexplained deviation plus unexplained deviation. 
plus explain the deviation are very, very important uh, diagnostics in least squares regression. Okay. Uh, so based on this formula, uh, both side we divided by sigma. This is an equation. Both side we divided by total deviation. So left hand side I divided by this. Uh, right hand side I also divided by sigma y minus y bar. Square it. Okay. So left hand side, right hand side divided by this guy. Left hand side you get one. Okay. And the right hand side you get unexplained divided by total variation, this one here. This one is this part. Okay. And uh, explained variation over total variation is this part. Explained over total variation. Okay. And we call this explained variation over total variation, we call this term is R square, coefficient of determination. So this is my R square. Okay, which one is R square? This one here, explained variation over total variation, that is R square. So R square equal to one, one minus unexplained total variation. Um, so this is an example. We already did this at the beginning. Found and interpret the coefficient of determination for the drilling data. We already did that. And the interpretation is 59.75% of the variability in drilling time, drilling time is y, is explained by the least square line by x. 59.75% changes in y is explained by x. All right, so next, let's take a deeper look at the coefficient of determination by analyze the three different data set. So here I have data set A, you have X, Y. Data set B, you have X, Y. And the data set C, okay. And for each data, if I produce a scatter plot, it will look like this. This is data set A, B, C. From this kind of plot, you can see data A, the data are more concentrated around the straight line. And the data set B, a little bit spread, okay, a little bit away from the straight line. And the data C, further away from a straight line. By just looking at those diagrams, you can guess the coefficient of determination R square, which one is bigger? Set A, because data concentrated on the straight line. Which R square have the smallest value? Data set C, because data are drifting away from the straight line. So based on the number, we can say data A, you have 99.99% R square equal to 99.99% and the data set B, 94.7%. Data set C, um, it is just 9.4%. Okay. So that is uh, give you the visual explanation, R square. Um, so, so far we talked about the coefficient of determination R square. Next, we will do the residue analysis. 
Remember what is the residue? Residue is observed y minus predicted y. That is the residue. Okay. Uh, why we are going to do the residue analysis? Because we can use residue analysis to determine whether a linear model is appropriate to describe the relationship between x and y. And we can also use residue analysis to determine whether the variance of the residue is constant. Why the variance of the residue is constant matters because that is one of the requirements to do the linear regression analysis. If the variance of residues is not constant, you cannot use the regression analysis. The last uh, usage for residue analysis, we can check for outliers. Outliers are um, the extreme data, either very big data or very small data, far away from the average data. Um, so let's do a um, residue analysis, okay? Um, in this plot, this y is residue. You use residue as y. And what is x? Original x is a horizontal line. Residue is y. Okay. If the residue like this is spread all over the place, that is a good residue plot. Okay, that means linear model is appropriate. And if you take a look at this residue plot, this residue plot looks like a pattern. It is like a parabola. And this is not a good residue plot. And that means linear model is not appropriate. So before you do the data analysis, before you use linear model, you need to make sure you check the residue plot. How do you plot residue plot? You can use Excel, okay? You use Y as residue, X is X. If the plot spread all over the place even, that is a good residue plot. If the residue plot has a pattern, okay? That means linear model is not appropriate. So let's look at this example. The question is, is a linear module appropriate? Um, a chemist has a 1,000 gram sample of a radioactive material. She records the amount of radioactive material remaining in the sample every day for a week and obtains the following data. Okay, those are the data. So the day is X, weight is Y. Mm -hmm. So first, the researcher perform um, a scatter plot. So weight is Y, day is X. Okay, so this, and also get the linear correlation coefficient, negative 0 0.994 means when you increase x, y decrease. It makes sense because it is a radioactive material. As time goes by, the, the weight becomes less and less. So this is a scatter plot between x and y. And when you produce residue analysis, so see here, this is residue. And this is x. And this is the residue plot has obvious pattern, parabola pattern. That means linear model is not appropriate. When linear model is not appropriate, you have to seek other methods. You can uh, maybe polynomial or take the log of the original data to transform the data. That is outside this lecture scope. Mm. Um, so if 
are ready to plot shows the spread of residue increasing or decreasing as explanatory variable. Explanatory variable is x. Then a strict requirement is violated. Okay, in other words, if the plot of residue is not constant, does not have constant error, that violates the requirement for linear residue. So this requirement we call constant error variance. The statistical term for this constant error variance is homeostasticity. Means uh, the variance of the error must be constant. All right. So let's look at this diagram. The first diagram shows explanatory variable x and the response variable y. This is the scatter plot. And uh, the second diagram, x is the explanatory variable. y is the residue. It is a residue plot. In this residue plot, do you believe there is a constant error for the residue? constant error variance? No, because you see, it looks like the variance becomes bigger and bigger as you increase the x. So this is an example of not constant error. So that means the requirement for, one of the requirements for linear regression is violated because the variance of the error is not constant. What we need, we need the variance of the error is constant. Um, so, so far we talked about the residue analysis, residue analysis. And uh, next, we are going to use residue analysis, identify inferential point or inferential observation. Um, in this scatter diagram, this is a scatter diagram for a sample. Okay. Uh, we observed this point is far away from majority of data. So this point might be an outlier. Okay. Uh, and the second graph is the residue plot. In this residue plot, we also found a point far away from majority of the residue. And this is the box plot for residue. Again, we have a point far away from majority of the data. So this point is the outlier. So using the residue analysis, we can identify outlier. So let's take a look at this example. This example asks you to draw a residue plot of the drilling data. Comment on the appropriateness of the linear least square regression model. So first, we need to draw residue plot. A residue plot. So to do that, you, you can use Excel. How do I draw residue plot? Uh, there are many ways to do it. One way you can do the data analysis. So you select those data range. You go to data and the menu bar, and then data analysis. Okay. Um, choose regression, click OK. So input Y range, Y from D3, D to D, correct? Um, Y from input Y range, I'd better re enter it to make sure. So, this is my Y. As you can see, I include the label. And what is my X? This is my X. 
Okay. And I'm going to put the result in a new worksheet. And I need residue plot. See, check out residue plot. Quick OK button. The input range contains no numeric value. The input range, I copy this data from top, or maybe I need, oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to double check this data first to make sure it is a numerical data, form and sales, form and sales number. Two decimal places, do I need two decimal places? Okay, I need decimal places. Click OK, okay, and then I repeat myself. Go to data, data analysis, regression. Uh, okay, label new worksheet. Uh, input range contains non numerical data. Input range, input range contains non numerical data. Um, how about I start from, I don't want to include label to see what happens. Um, formula tracking. So the reason I didn't get a result from clear, maybe I copied this data from a PowerPoint slide. Uh, but anyway, this is the method. Uh, you go to data, data analysis, regression, then check out the residue plot. You can get residue plot, okay? Another way to get residue plot, you can calculate the residue. Remember what is the residue? Residue is the difference between observed Y and predicted Y, okay? Uh, here is the example. How do you calculate residue? See? Um, So you use this formula, observed Y minus predicted Y, you get residue, okay? And you do this for each and every data. So that is the uh, residue plot where we are. Here, we are here, okay, so this is the residue plot. Uh, this residue plot uh, looks like it is spread evenly, okay, the residue. So that means uh, it is a, a good residue plot. That means uh, the least square regression model is appropriate. And this is the box plot for residues, okay, there is no outline, okay. Uh, in this box plot, remember this is Q1, 25th percentile. This is Q2, mid, median, uh, 50th percentile. This is Q3, 75th percentile. And this is the minimum, minimum value. And this is the maximum. See, you see the five number here, remember five number theory. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's switch again, focus on uh, inferential observations. Okay. So an inferential observation is an observation that significantly affect linear squares, regression slope, and the y-intercept, or the value of correlation coefficient. Significantly affect slope, intercept, and the correlation coefficient, that point is an inferential point or inferential observation. Okay. Um, so let's look at this diagram, explanatory variable x, response variable y. Okay, we looks like we have three cases far away from the other parts, but for these three cases, this case three, is the farthest, furthest, okay? So maybe case three is likely the inferential point. Mm -hmm. 
also in influence by inferential point is affected by two factors. One factor is relative vertical position of observational data. Okay, vertical observation, in this case, relative. The other factor, relative horizontal position, that we, horizontal position leverage. So let's look at the example. Suppose an additional data is added to the drilling data. At the depth of uh, 300 feet, means x equal to 300, it takes 12.49 minutes to drill 5 feet, means 12.49 is y. The question is, is this point inferential? Okay. So let's draw a um, standard diagram. So this is depth x, time is y. Okay. When you have uh, x equal to 300, 300 is here, and y is 12.49, this is 12.49, so this is the point. x equal to 300, y equal to 12.49. So obviously, this point is the essential point because it's way too far away from the majority of data here. And when you have inferential point, okay, your regression line becomes this one here. This is your regression line when you have inferential point. When you do not have inferential point, this is the line without inferential point. You see, there are two different lines. Which line is better represent uh, the original data? Okay. So we would say, this one here without inferential point because this inferential distort um, the story of the data. So, as with outliers, inferential observation should be removed if there is justification to do so. If you are not sure whether I want to move the inferential point you have two factors to consider. One, you collect more data so that additional points near the inferential point are obtained. Uh, second, uh, you can use other techniques such as transformation or differentiate uh, the method. But this technique is outside the scope of this lecture. Okay. All right. So in summary, what we did for this lecture, we actually, again, um, did three things. We compute and interpret the coefficient of determination, R squared. Uh, we also perform residue analysis on our regression equation. Finally, we identify inferential observation. Okay. That's all for this lecture for diagnostics of least squares regression. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.